Are you tired of people always telling you what you want to hear and not what you need to hear? Me too. Are you ready to actually do something about it? Hi, I'm Lauren Lahav, and for the past 30 plus years, I've been blessed to speak and to impact thousands of people around the world. I've shared the stage with the world's top thought leaders, including Barbara Walters, Tony Robbins, Barbara Corcoran, and Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm also a personal development, lifestyle, and business coach, event producer, and entrepreneur with businesses in over 25 countries. I'm a wife and a proud mama to three and a bonus mom to one. Trust me when I tell you, it took me many years of buying into my old story of I'm not enough and lots of grit to finally let go of the BS. So I understand firsthand what it means and what it took. They don't call it the school of hard knocks for nothing. This podcast is my way of breaking down the BS filters of what we say, what we do, and how we interact with others. I will be sharing what worked for me, yet more importantly, what didn't work for me. This is a no fluff podcast where we will address real life issues, real issues that seem to surface when you least expect it, relationship conflict and breakdowns, and real solutions. I will share from my life experiences and those of other everyday heroes, as well as the world's top experts are all here to help you grow through the process of letting go and finally expressing your true voice, who you are and what you stand for. In a world of political correctness and living our lives on social media, it's hard to know what is real. And are you taking in so much information, but not applying what you've learned? In my life, I always look to the people who understand what I'm going through and are willing to get honest and forthcoming with me to help me grow through these challenges. Trust me, I've had them all, and I'm going to take the time to be as real as possible and get to solutions. I've had financial issues, parenting issues, marriage issues, emotional issues. You know, the list goes on. I've learned from my challenges, I've grown from them, and continue to learn from them. I see them now as opportunities. With this podcast, we're going to tune up our lives. I'll be your cup of espresso to get you through whatever you're going through in your life that's holding you back, to give you that confidence and trust of knowing someone is there to help and guide you, yet you have to do the work. So strap in, hang on tight, and let's get real. I really wanted to start by uh, putting on some music and just put on a little tequila music this morning. So I I could get that in there. (laughs) Oh my God, this is going to be so much fun. Did you see I wore my necklace that my husband just got me in New Mexico, not Mexico, but when he was um, out having a nice little shot of tequila, he he found this for me. So I I wore this in honor of you today. Those of you can't see my beautiful necklace that thank is you from, and we match because i'm in the, we like, do match we color. didn't there even know oh my god this is so 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 exciting as you know i bring you women that are really rocking it and really staying true to themselves and taking the risk i was talking to jackie and you did a call with jackie <laughs> yeah. and jackie's like lauren she's just like you she's like she just like goes and like makes it happen so let me <laughs> let me give you an official an official you know professional welcome. We are here with Mara Smith and she was a former attorney in Chicago and she started drinking tequila. I know when you started drinking tequila. (laughs) I know you're going to talk about when you started doing that, but you were really looking for that clean, gluten-free spirit that fit into your active lifestyle. I love that. I have a friend that that's what she has been looking for when we start talking about your spirits, but um, you decided to really start this amazing tequila brand, um, Inspiro, which is awesome. And it's all women owned run. I was reading about the lady that, um, the distiller and I love her. What's her name? Anna Marie. Anna Maria Romero Mania. Mm -hmm. My gosh. And I see you guys over here in the fields. I can't wait to hear a little bit about that. So, okay, let's just get right to it. You had a very successful career. You found yourself and you're like, um, you, I think it was with your kids, right? Your twins that so you had your twins. Yes. So basically, um, a, a long time ago, <laughs> um, I worked at like the largest law firm at the time in Chicago. Um, and I think 
I kind of was always really myopically focused on like, okay, what do I need to do to get to the next goal? What's the next goal? Um, you know, I worked really hard to get into the law school I wanted to go to. And then once I got to law school, I knew I wanted to get like the big firm job to make sure I could pay for law school. So kind of this um, entrepreneurial journey I'm on now was nothing I ever contemplated because I was super risk averse. Like I'm like the little girl who my ultimate job was to be a Supreme Court justice. And there's really oh. no other job that's even more secure because it's a job for life. Right. Um, so <laughs> I just wanted a very secure stable job that I could like, you know, make sure I could support myself. Um, so I think that was like always the focus. So I went to this big law firm. Then once I decided that I um, was ready, wanted to start a family um, and I got great experience there. And I, I actually, I, I loved working there and did amazing, huge, fun deals. But once I knew I wanted to start a family at that time, I had no role models there. There were no women partners in my entire department. So I didn't have anyone to look to, to see, well, how could you possibly balance work at a large law firm and having a family? Um, the only option I saw was to go part-time and then part-time meant um, I work full-time. I just get paid for part-time. I'm off the partnership track, um, which for me was something that I was, you know, didn't really want to go that route yeah. and that you don't get the big, sexy, fun deals. You get the things that other people don't want to work on. So I didn't see that as a, as, you know, great route for me. And I decided to move to the business side because my undergrad degree um, is in accounting. I'm a CPA. And I said, okay, I'm going to move to the business side. I went to McDonald's corporation to work in their uh, corporate strategy and business development department. And actually that is the first time it kind of sparked my entrepreneurial spirit. I was studying consumer trends and insights and we were ideating and I just thought the whole process was really fascinating coming up with like new ideas for the company. Um, and unfortunately my corporate career though came to a screeching halt because I became pregnant with my oldest two twins and put on emergency bed rest. Um, and then had preemie twins and made the decision to stay home, thought they needed my attention. I'm very fortunate to be able to make that choice, but it is nothing that I ever anticipated um, that was my biggest like career pivot. I never saw myself being home. No one who knew me probably ever saw that either. I mean, I was once, you know, very, very focused, very driven. Um, and making that change was like a, a huge adjustment. You know, it's me. so funny. It's so funny. I have to interrupt for a second because it made me smile. I don't know if you can see any of you that can't see us as we're talking, it made me laugh because one of our one of our speakers at the event as uh, her name's Kathy Buckley and she's the godmother to my eldest son who I'm going to actually bring up who's a lot like you with regards to certain things but um, she says you want to make God laugh you tell him your plan right you tell him your plan so it's like you said yes. like you never imagined that you were going to be a stay at home mom because you had this whole track but like what a, like what a gift it's almost like that you that became a gift for you, right? It gave you the time, kind of like what happened to people just now with this, I call it the mandatory pause in the world. It gave people yeah. a time to say, hang on, stop. What, what is it? So go ahead, back to your story. I just wanted yeah, to say. And it's a, right. So I ended up being home and, and what I, you know, I think I kind of took that job just as seriously as my job uh, when I was, I had one outside the home. So I became CEO of my house. I just dove in. I, um, so everything, my, you know, also my husband, it's a, a very time intensive job. So really everything from managing all household items, all children, um, and especially having twins and preemie twins. Um, it was, you know, it, I never was bored for a minute, um, very time consuming anyways. And then, so I'm going to interrupt, I'm going to interrupt again. So what did you learn from that? Because what it sounds like that that time as being an attorney and being in a firm and having great systems, right? It sounds like you learned a lot that you were really able to bring home to the environment as the CEO of your home. Would you say that? Like, what did, what did you learn? Yes, that I, I learned that a couple of things. One, I've always been pretty independent so that I can handle and manage things on my own. Um, and, and feel comfortable taking care of everything that has to get done in the house. I mean, including like I, I built a house that I'm sitting in and like, I mean, researching and understanding what kind of furnace needs to go in the house and, and, and recognizing when they put the wrong one in, it wasn't a variable stage furnace, like really knowing that my research skills, I could like 
learn any area um, that I needed to. And I had honed those skills um, as an attorney and that I could apply them. Um, I'm negotiating all the time if it's with contractors right. and suppliers. And um, so I, I feel like I still was using a lot of those. And, um, and I think skills. I think it's an important thing though for people to hear. Cause I think lots of times, you know, people think, oh my gosh, that this is gone. I, I you know, I, I say it a lot on the on the podcast. So I apologize if I repeat it to our listeners, but you know, I say that we go through different stages of our life. There's the discovering who we are. Then there's the staying true, right? Like we found it, like we get the job, we do the thing that we thought we were going to do. And then like, well, like, like, voila, we get pregnant. We're like, oh my gosh. And then we have to go through this rediscovery stage. Like, what is it? What, what skills do I really have? How can I bring them to this next level? And then it's that, that fi- the next stage, I feel like that I'm kind of in, which is that, um, that staying connected. And I know that's a big thing for you, which we'll talk about in a, in a minute as well. But, um, but how many people kind of throw the baby out with bathwater? They get so locked into their roles that they forget who they really are at their core. And you, from what I'm hearing from you, you really remembered like who you were as a person, not just as an attorney, right? Like we go, we're a mom, we're this, yes. we're that. So, you know what? Yes and no. I'll say there's a couple of things. One, I feel like, unfortunately, I don't think society's got to the point where they really value this. And I actually just posted something on LinkedIn with really value, like care, being a caretaker, um, being a stay-at-home mom is like a significant job. Um, and I think I also started questioning that and not really respecting as well my my choice and what I had done, um, especially when I decided to re-enter the workforce and have a startup and start my own company, you know, am I, do I have credibility? Are people going to take me seriously? I've been out of the workforce for a long time. And um, I'm, you know, I'm trying to rethink that as well. Like, oh, well, yes, we talked about, I have all the skills that I had before I was home. I also probably developed a lot of additional skills that are um, very applicable to the workforce, right? I had preemie twins. I can multitask like nobody's business, right? Super efficient with three kids. Um, flexibility, no day goes as planned ever. Um, you know, so, and the same thing with startup, there's constant, you know, um, problem solving. What's plan B? What's plan C? So do you think I had to, I took me a while to recognize that I actually, um, you know, a better founder because of that and valuing that experience is actually being something that um, developed skills, not that I stagnated for an entire period of time and it didn't do anything. And I think it's really hard to recognize um, ourselves. And I think that's probably also because the perception um, of society also of like what value. Yeah. And I think there's a lot, a lot of talent and skill that is there that we're not tapping into. I totally agree. Well, you know, I mean, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm bummed you can't be there live with us, but I know what I love about you and respect so much about you is it, you know, you make your family's the priority though, like with regards to spring growth is happening (laughs) and going and being with them, but I'm excited that you are going to be able to come in um, virtually to be a part of that. But let's talk a little bit about the spirits world tequila. I wonder if I would have, I mean, I don't know. I, I drank a lot of bourbon when I was in college. That's probably how I put on the freshman, whatever that it was. <laughs> um, but I know uh, the spirits world is very male dominated. What what made you, first of all, even go into tequila? Yes. Well, when I, I knew I wanted to start my own company, I'd been thinking about that for years. I knew I wanted it to be in food and beverage. It's just because I'm a consumer. I love taste testing. I'm just, it's just a category I'm interested in. So I kept coming back to tequila. I've been a tequila drinker for years. That became my clean spirit option, right? Um, I like wine. I don't feel well after drinking wine because of all the sugar. So I started just drinking tequila and and finding really good quality tequila. There were a couple of things that I discovered. One, as I started researching this, 50% of tequila consumers are female. And I could not figure out why brands do not focus on this consumer. So using marketing that is scantily clad women in dark club scenes just did not personally resonate with me. And I don't think it resonates with other thoughtful female consumers. And she controls and, you know, makes over 80% of the purchasing decisions in the home. So I just thought, wow, is there seemed to be an opportunity here that someone's really not focused on. And as we talked about, here's me getting back into 
the workforce. And if I was going to do it, I really wanted to go in an area where I could make an impact. And I do think because the spirits industry, there are so few female voices, um, for me entering into an industry where I could lend a new perspective and have a female perspective. And that is why everyone from our master distiller in Mexico, down the line, sales, marketing, we are um, distilled, owned, and led by all women. So I thought, here's an opportunity just to provide a different, you know, viewpoint. Um, and who better also to talk to this consumer that I'm really focused on than someone who understands her, knows how to speak to her, and is her. So that's kind of how- and, and, You know, it's off. just so interesting, like, that, that people forget that part of it, right? It's like really understanding their customers. I always say that, you know, uh, we always say that questions are the answers, and not enough people ask questions, right? Like, asking- what what's most important to you in a tequila? Like, is it, you know, do you, do you want to know if they're about, I like, I loved it when you, when I just first talked to you the first time and you were talking about that everyone, everyone, you know, from the distiller to every part of it was uh, women owned and just that, what have you noticed by having an all women company after so, working in? Yeah. What, I know after oh. I was in a totally different industry. Yes. And when I was at the law firm, you know, I was, I was definitely in the minority there. Um, and, um, so, I mean, I think, um, I think we all really understand this consumer the same way. So I think when we're speaking about our, we just had our marketing like strategy session and it was, you know, all women in the room. And I feel like everyone really got it. They understood who we're talking to, who this person is. Um, and I, I think just being feeling like we're on the same wavelength with that. Um, I also think our big, you know, another big reason that I started is, it, and I may have told you this before also, but, you know, um, because I drink tequila for like a clean option, once I started doing a lot of research and discovered that there are so many additives and, and like the vast majority of tequila brands are using additives, coloring, flavoring, glycerin, then I really was like, okay, I can actually, not only can I speak to a different consumer, but I can try and like innovate by coming up with, you know, um, the, the kind of taste profile this consumer likes, but without using additives but having it still taste great. Like you're no additives, but you're not compromising on the taste. So I thought I could offer actually a, a product that was somewhat differentiated, focus on a consumer that was, you know, a little bit different here and also bring a perspective that I thought would be um, somewhat unique. And, um, and it's so pretty. In the industry. I got to tell you. Thank you. I mean, no, it's, a, it's beautiful. And I think that that really matters, right? Like, I don't know about, you know, like the aesthetics of it. There's, I love that it's a, I know this might sound really crazy, not maybe it's not gonna sound crazy to you because, but I'm a woman, right? Like if I was designing a tequila bottle, I wouldn't want something that's fat and like, you know, like bulky and, but just the whole part of it, it's a, it's slim and beautiful and elegant. I remember when I lived and I was a, I worked on my doctorate of waitressing, obviously any good college graduate would do that instead of going, like getting a real job. <laughs> like I should have been better and done that. But I learned so much because, you know, people love, I remember people would come in and they would buy shots of things, but they love to buy it from the one that's a pretty bottle because if they drank enough shots from the bottle, they thought that, I think there were bottles that were made out of Lalique, was there was some company. Oh, nice. And so that we're like, here, you know, for $50 a shot, you know, here, we'll just give you the bottle at the end of it. But I know that's, it's, anyway, go ahead. No, I wanted this? a bottle that I would personally want to put, if you can see it in my background there, yep. um, that I would personally want to put on my home bar. Yep. I also, um, I wanted it super sleek and sophisticated. I didn't want it to have depictions of like agave fields or skulls or anything like that. I wanted it to be like really pretty. And it also mm -hmm. is very purposefully slender in the middle because I want it to be easy to hold and pour. I agree with you, those big round stout bottles, are just harder to manipulate. Yeah. And I thought I wanted it functional as well as looking really pretty. So that was actually the first thing I did was design the bottle. I knew I wanted a, a custom crafted bottle. And I think that those, you know, like I love that you just said that everything was intentional because I always say that intention does matter, right? And people forget that, that when you're in, uh, that's so funny that like the uh, why it's slender in the middle, like you said, yeah. for you to hold on to. I love that. Um, okay, so I want to talk about what I love so much about you is like that you really went out there and built your own door. I think you used that example uh, before in an interview, but I loved um, as well, you know, that 
it's not an easy industry to get in, especially as a female. And I was thinking when I was thinking about you telling your story about just studying tequila, about reading books, about hearing podcasts, my son um, is a gemologist. Okay. And he decided to become a gemologist, but like you, just like it was very similar to your story talking about there were people that had been in the industry for 50 years or 60 years. And they knew, they already knew everything about, you know, all, everything about gems, or like you said, everybody, they already knew everything about tequila. And I think sometimes we, we get lazy when we're in that place where we think we know so much. Right. Like, and I love that, you know, like you said that you learned, I think that you heard it with new ears, right. You saw things that maybe some of those people didn't ever see. What have some of those people, cause I'm sure some of those people have learned a lot from you. Have you had some of those people come back to you and go, wow, we never thought about that before of what yeah, you brought to your mind. Cause I know you've only, but I think it's what you started in February of 2020. So three years, you just had your, yeah. your third year anniversary. Yep. Yeah. Yes. And, and I think, you know, one, it's intimidating going into new industry and, and not knowing, and especially the spirits industry. What I realized is that a lot of people have been in the industry for a very long time. Like you talked about, you know, gemology. So people know the industry, they've been in for a long time. Um, so that was a little bit intimidating. Like how, how are they going to listen to me? Um, but I feel like that forced me to do um, a ton, a ton of research and legwork that maybe, yes, you would be complacent and not necessarily do if you didn't feel like you had to like prove yourself. Um, it also, I think there's something to be said about being able to innovate in an industry because you don't know what you don't know. So I look at everything like a little bit like differently, like, well, why do they traditionally do it this way? Why aren't they doing it this way? Why, you know, um, so I think it allows you to kind of have like come in with an outsider's perspective and um, hopefully change things up a little. And so I do think that there are some people who are, who've been in for a long time and there could be something that I could lend a little bit of a different, um, you know, like there are certain methodologies that they always want you to use. Like traditionally, everyone starts what's called on-premise. You build a brand, you start by getting into bars and restaurants. I looked at it a little bit differently. I started it during COVID. I, you know, they weren't open. And um, for me, my realization was that's a really hard way to play for a small new brand. I said, we're going to build this like a, a more of a digital, um, you know, footprint for ourselves and, um, and build brand awareness that way. Um, so I think people saw that, like, I looked at it a little bit, you know, differently um i think engaging in communities that are maybe outside the traditional spirits world also was kind of atypical as well so when i've given that advice to some other people who are in the spirits world like i started off building a community which i'm sure we'll talk about but like looking at just um groups of you know women's groups then i looked at the broader like the CPG category of like people in the natural food product category and CPG and also spirits, but like just looking at these other different um, kind of bigger areas yeah. and connecting with people there and seeing that you can learn from other verticals so that you don't have to just look at, okay, well, how do other spirits brands do it? I mean, frankly, if I thought there was another tequila brand that was doing it exactly how I would want to do it and, and exactly right. We want to, uh, uh, Inspiro Tequila won't be necessary. So I think that there, you know, I can learn a lot from like another vertical. It could be in beauty or it can be in, you know, a new gluten-free food that I think is doing a great job of getting the messaging and speaking to the consumer. Um, so that's also where I think it comes with like a little bit of a different perspective that I'm like maybe looking broader beyond just the category. Yep. I love that. I love that so much for so many reasons. I think that so many times, like once again, I think we all get complacent. I think the complacency is a, is the, the, the biggest challenge that happens for so many. I was, I used to, uh, I created a, a group of people who would come and work events and I would always give people just a tiny bit of responsibility and people go, why do you do that? Why don't you just do it with less people? I'm like, because they're going to, they're going to, each one of them has a different perspective on things that I could learn something from, right? Like, so we would have this event where people, um, we'd they'd have to wear wristbands and that's how we knew how people paid to come into the event. 
And there was this guy, his name was Reggie Horn. And he would give everybody high fives, you know, as they would come in the door. And I'm like, Reggie, you're so awesome. You know, giving everybody high fives. He's like, uh, Lauren, that's not why I'm giving everybody high fives. I'm like, well, why are you giving them high fives? He goes, checking. Because I could check their wristbands. And I was like, oh my God, that's brilliant, right? So like you said, when you look at all these different verticals, even though it might not be tequila, you still learn something amazing yeah. through it, right? And that, I, that, we, that we, we just assume that if it's not, you know, from our, our industry that we can't really learn from it, which is so not true. And I think that let's talk a little bit about it. Um, talk a little bit about the, the Purple Bicycle Project. Yeah. You want to share a little? Yes, I'm excited for you to share this. So it, it's, it, if people look on the website, I just named it this initiative um, based on a, an episode in my my young life when I was four years old to kind of um, demonstrate my, um, I guess, determination or stubbornness um, as a young child and being very persistent. But really, it's that I just want to make sure, you know, giving back has, has been part of my personal ethos. And it's part of the brand. Um, and so really, I feel very fortunate that so many women have offered guidance and feedback and supported me on this journey. And just how can I pay it forward? What little things can I do to give back? So we provide grants and mentoring just to try and help other women um, that also are getting started and trying to follow their passion, especially women who are you know, maybe trying to re-enter the workforce and see how they can get back in and maybe start something on their own. So yeah, that's been our initiative. We've um, been a sponsor of a women's pitch competition. Um, I sponsored a professional development grant and then I mentor the winner of that professional development grant. We got that last year. Um, we sponsored three more additional grants through iFund Women to help people on their crowdfunding campaigns, three women-owned businesses. Um, and I just like, one, I like things that are a little more hands-on. So for me, it's enjoyable. I read like every single application that came in for mm -hmm. the professional development grant. I went and read through, then narrowed down. Um, so I just, and, and you that. know, and I actually, it was so hard for me to choose one that I offered to three different women to mentor them that I'd be happy to talk to them and mentor them. I could only give one one grant, but I said, I'm happy to like talk to all three of you. Um so that's kind of what that. Um, what's been one that what what's one story that you read that made a huge impact on you that you're like, oh my gosh, thank goodness I didn't just stop with the tequila brand and didn't and that I and and that you kept going with um the you know with regards to the purple bicycle <laughs> project. Like, what's one thing that you said that you knew someone's life and their business was going to be able to start because you said. That you, how important contribution so I was think, for it. Honestly, I think the, the, um, with the grants that we provided for the iPhone women campaign, the fact that all the winners reached out and told me how significant it wasn't a huge amount of money, but for a crowdfunding campaign, it made such an impact and it let, so one of them, it actually, um, got them to their goal, their fundraising goal. And then it's funny because I've seen the same founder now, um, as part of communities I'm part of and things like that. And I've seen her out there and I've seen her brand and I've now seen it promoted on things. So kind of made me excited to see that like, okay, we were like a little piece of that, like pushing her yeah. to that goal line. And now um, she's out there. So that's, that's like one example. And, and yeah, like, and you just never know, you know, it's funny. I know I've been very persistent with you to make sure you're going to be a part of them because I've had so many people, like a lot of people have come to me and like wanted to be a part of the event and, I've been very like, no, nope, these are the people and here's why. And a huge part of it, one is because of that part of mission, you know, I mean, for us, like it, you can see everybody that's a part of this event is all really focused on mission, right? How do I give back? How do I serve? Today's my, um, what am I, been my dad's uh, 93rd birthday. And so I, you know, I was saying, I'm so grateful, just like you, that my parents raised me with such strong contribution values. Right. Like you just yeah. getting, getting. And I think that that really is our responsibility to help all of our kids understand that if you really want to, if you're going through stuff in your life, the best way to get out of that is to go volunteer and to go help, go help somebody else, go help, you know, in any kind of way that you can. So, but why, why the purple bicycle? I need to know more. I need well, to know the purple more. Bicycle. Okay. So the story of the purple bicycle is when I was four years old, 
I was, I was very little also. I was a very little child. Um, and I coveted this like large purple bicycle. It was way too big for me. It was, you know, like shiny wheels. It was just like, I really wanted to ride it. It was a two wheeler. So I never, I've never ridden a two wheeler. So I told my parents, I'm going to ride the bicycle. And they said, yeah, it's too big for you. And you know, you don't know how to ride a bicycle yet. So I'm like, okay. And so I literally left that morning and could not actually sit on the seat and reach the pedals at the same time and fell over many, many times. I remember falling into a fence and scratching the whole side of my leg. And I was super determined because if someone tells me I can't do something, I'm like, okay, well, that I approve of just kind of shows you what's like, you know, environment versus like what you're born with, because obviously I was four years old and this was just already in me. Um, yeah. And I set out and all day until the end of the day I was riding. I still could not sit on the seat and reach the pedals. I was standing up riding, but I was going to ride that purple bicycle no matter what. And I think that's, it just, that story just for me exemplified, um, the struggle, the, the, you know, how hard it is, a startup, lots of bumps in the road, but like being determined, being persistent and pursuing something. And I named it that just because I feel like that's what we're trying to help people do is, you know, what does it take to pedal, yeah. get started and navigate those bumps in the road? And how can we be a little piece of that and help? Well, I would love to support however I can with the purple bicycle. I mean, that's really a big part of it. I want to be able to give some tickets for the own your worth event to some of the, for some of your winners. So I just wanted oh to gosh, announce that you. here um, for those that's people, okay. because, you know, because like you said, like everything, like whether it's so, so many times we don't know how we're going to do it. Right. But when we have the community around us that is cheering you on or giving you little resources in any kind of ways that'll help you get to the next level, you, you just never know, right? You never know what's going to be that one thing that got that person to say, okay, I've got this. I mean, my one thing for my purple bicycle with this event was a friend of mine. I had been doing these women retreats for like 14 years and it was nice. They were fun. It was kind of a little bit like your law firm, right? Like it was nice. I knew what to do. I knew how to plan a retreat. I knew how to like make an, a wow experience for people. And it was comfortable. I'd have like 40, like 50 people there that they were at the event. And then I kept saying this one friend of mine, I'm going to do a huge event do a huge event and my one friend Heather I'm like I wrote her I'm like I'm doing this I'm doing this event I'm doing this huge event and she goes yeah Lauren I've heard you say that for five years right but that became someone that would be part of that project for me right because that gave me like I'll show you I'm doing it like I'm doing it I'll figure it out right I don't know how to write it I don't have all the the pieces together to be able to make it happen but I'll do it but I think that we have to look at so many things that can fire up that fire us up that's going to give us the inspiration to really go for it right so probably yours was I don't know on my hallucinations people are like you're an attorney and you're going to start a tequila brand like what do you know about tequila totally. right right so how did that become did you go back to that purple bicycle moment or something during that well, time I think it's that I think when you gave that example it also says like something sparked it but then you went into action like I yes. don't believe an opportunity is coming and knocking on your door. I am a, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm about execution, yeah. not like just coming up with things. And I just like, I'm about like implementation and how you do it. I tell yeah. my kids, my older kids, like, you know, jobs don't come. No one comes and offers you a job. Um, you know, you need to go out and seek it. So you made yeah. it happen. And that's like what I, I think is always been is like, I don't kind of wait for opportunities just to yeah. appear. Like I think that I have the ability to make those happen by, by working really hard. I mean, that day was not easy. I was little and I tried all day to ride the bicycle. And Starting people probably tried to say, and people, I'm sure people said, do you get off the bike? It's, it's not going to happen. You're not going to do it. You're only four, right? Like I'm sure that a lot of right. time, or people, but people have said that to me, you know, like, really, are you sure you want to do that? Are you sure you want to put yourself on the line? Are you sure you want to do that? So Keep right. going, but like you said, and, like and you it's kept a big action. Yes. And like you're so here you want to start, like do a big event. Well, like, okay, well, that's hard. Yes, it is hard. It takes a ton of work. I mean, I don't think, you know, um, if you're not willing to like put in the work, it's not gonna happen. You're not gonna make yep. it happen. Um, so I'm I'm a very practical person, I'd say. I think yes, you need to like have the confidence and believe that you can make it happen, but 
that alone, unless you're willing to like pound yep. the pavement and actually do it and make it happen. Um, cause no one's going to, no one's going to do it for you. So nope. that's what I think is like, yes, you can have that kind of like little bit of a inspiration to like push you forward. But if you don't take the next step and like actually take action, nothing's gonna, nothing's right. gonna happen. I and you have funny. to take the action. Like you said, like, no, no one's going to come to you. I was, you know, I do this manifestation course. I've been doing it for like, you could probably, I muted out all my boards in the background, but I'll just kind of show you for a second. Those of everybody else could see that. Um, but I, I always say to everybody, okay. you can see them now it's kind of obnoxious, but I like it. Um, anyway, the, the reason why I say, it, I said, you know, you can intend and attend all you want, like, you know, but unless you like get off your hiney and go do something, you're not going to make it happen. You've got to do the work, like you said. So what would you say are the top three things that people really need to do to, um, to take that big, to take that leap, right? To take that leap. Like maybe they're in a job that they're comfortable. Yeah. So what, what, what are those three things? What are the three things they need yes. to do? And it's funny because I think um, it's funny when I first talked to Jackie, I think I told her this line. I said, I was thinking about what can I offer? What can I say? I'm like, I don't really think I'm a motivational speaker. I said, I think I'm a motivated speaker. Um, sorry, my little one is in the background there. A motivated speaker, like, right? Like I get motivated and I like just try and make things happen by doing. So I think the things you need to do are one, research. If you're interested in something, you want to make a career pivot, you want to enter into a new industry, start doing the research. So that you can see, is there really a need here? And do I really like this? Is this something I'm really interested in? I think being a little introspective and figuring out what are the things you like and what are the things you are good at? Because, you know, it maybe you find that you have great sales skills. And so you should be looking in that direction um, to think, you know, kind of doing a self-assessment. What are you good at? Doing the research, seeing, you know, what is involved, making sure you're really clear on what's involved. and then diving in and doing the work, being prepared, I believe. And there's so many resources out there um, and available to us now, right? I listen to podcasts. I read industry reports. Um, I read books. I go to webinars. I reached out to, you know, um, industry veterans. Um, so I think there's a lot out there and you can consume a ton of information and get up to speed quickly. So it's very possible. But I do think no matter how much due diligence you do on your own, I feel you need a community behind you. So yeah. building a community of people that are supportive um, mm -hmm. has been essential, right? I was re-entering the workforce. I have amazing, great girlfriends, but I didn't have any business contacts. So it was like step-by-step -step of building that. And it is very possible to do. Listen, I got in touch with you, <laughs> you know. It's, it's possible to make that yeah. happen. It's put people that you really want to, you know, be able to connect with um, there. I think it's great. And you can put that on the vision board, but then you have to take those steps to get there. That's so correct. One person introduces me to someone else and I follow up and I LinkedIn message people and I go in though, always thoughtful and prepared. So before I reach out to someone or talk to them or say, Hey, I want to be on your podcast. or I'd like to connect with you. I've done due diligence. Like I know everything I can about their lives. I know their, how many kids they have. I know where they live. I know, you know, I feel like I'm very good. You know, the, the stalker piece of that is good. I know. No, but they, it, I, I think that book, what it does, I think, I think what it is, is that it builds trust, you know? And I think that right now, more than anything, people want to know, can they trust you? Can they trust that you actually care about them? People talk about me all the time that I, I'm talking to everybody all the time. Like, I want to know your story. I mean, I know every Uber driver's story. I'm probably like, I could go back and like tell them, you know, the story of your life. You must have a good rating then. I, I do have a good rating. I've got, the, I've got the star rating where the better, you know, yes. So, but, but because truly like people want to know you care, right? Like people want to know yeah. that you like that, like you said, like that it's not just a, like I was very intentional, like with putting together this event that we're doing, I'm very intentional of who, who are the people that are really walking the talk? People are tired of just being sold something and then finding out that it wasn't what they thought that it was. Right. right? So I love that you're, that who you are is intentional, you know, like, just like with, um, just like how you designed your products, how you designed your, your team, Right. 
how you design your community, how you, you know, who you have around you. And like you said, people want community. They want a community they know that they can really count on, you know, to be there, not just because it's a community. And I want to feel connected to people. And I also think, you know, going in, like I learned something from every single interaction, whoever it is. So I think my third piece of that is like, I really live by the model of trying to be learn it all and now to know it all. And oh, I, love that. Um, I always look for an opportunity to learn every single day. I learn something new. Like I'm in the startup world and I meet so many people. And I talk to many people and I look at every single one of those as like an opportunity to just expand my knowledge and learn something. So I feel like that is, I just, I don't go in thinking I know all the answers. There are certain areas that are more my area of expertise, but there are a lot of areas and a lot of, there's a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Learn, I think yeah. wanting to be a lifelong learn, learner, that's like kind of what keeps you young and excited yeah. about the next day and what that day has to offer and what you can learn. So I, that's a big I love that. piece of what I kind of live by. I love that. I love that. Always be learning. Always be learning, right? Um, you are so much fun. I'm so excited to meet you. I, I, I would come to Chicago right now, but I'm sure it's very cold and I'm not, I'm not right now. <laughs> it's cold, cold and cloudy. <laughs> oh, no yeah. sun. You could come see me. You can come see me. So oh. one final question before, well, there's a couple of things. One, I ask everybody this, what's one thing that you do to stay true to yourself every, every day, yes. no matter what? I think I know there are two things that, that I'm very consistent about. Everything else kind of like <laughs> may or may not happen on daily basis. One is that I make my matcha every single morning. And I just like the routine mm-hmm. of that. I like how it gets me set in the morning. And I, I, everything else, I do it like warp speed. And that's the one thing I kind of like take my time <laughs> and make it the like way it should be made, <laughs> whisking it and the whole thing. So <laughs> that, and um, I, you know, say a uh, prayer before bed every single night. So Love those it. are the things that I, I kind of start my day and yeah. the very end of my day, just to keep that consistency but once again, and everything so else in, is like a whirlwind. But like you said, it's intentional. Like, I think that, you know, like, like I, I love that. Like my big thing too, is like how you start your day and how you end your day. You know, mine starts with an iced tea from coffee bean. So that's how it just, I don't know what it is. Just makes me feel good to go see my Nessa lady that's there and, you know, check in with them. But I love, love, love that. And how I'm very excited about our recipe that you're going to be creating for the Own Your Worth, I, for all of our ladies to try that are going to be there virtually. And obviously those who are going to be there um, live. And so that we're going to be having that at the networking event. So tell us um, a little bit how people can learn more about the tequila, the brand itself. Yes. Yeah. So yes, you can follow us on at Inspiro Tequila. So on Instagram, TikTok, um, and again, oh, Pinterest probably. I'm not great at social media, but um, <laughs> we're out there. You can also follow me on at um, Be Inspired by Mara. Um, reaching out to me on LinkedIn though. I'm actually very active on LinkedIn, love LinkedIn. So that's a good way to find me, Mara Smith on LinkedIn. And then our website is www.inspiro, I-N-S-P-I-R-O, tequila.com. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, I'm excited to be part of it um, and the own your worth. I think I, I got the opportunity to listen to some of the other speakers and um, I think everyone will get some bit of inspiration out of it, whatever it is and however they want to move forward. Um, I was waiting for you to tell me like, what does own your worth mean to me? And I was, yeah, was going to ask be... you, that was a final, that's a final question. I was, yes, I was like yeah. waiting, waiting. For that, <laughs> I think that that's the kind of relevant to like what I think people can get out of that. And I think it's that everybody really does have the ability to make an impact. And that's to me, you know, understanding that owning your worth it, everyone. And it doesn't have to be seismic. It could be a small impact. Um, it could be, you know, an impact because you influence listen, it could be because you're home and raising kids. And if you raise humans that are kind and honest, like you made an impact and you brought them in, you know, raised more human beings like that. And so that brought them into the world. Um, so whatever it is and thinking about how you want to make an impact, what you can do, but that everyone has that ability to do it. If you're willing to take like the next step and, you know, forward. And that's where I think a lot of people, whatever those ideas have been, whatever they've been wanting to do, if it's helping in a charitable way, charitable way or starting a profitable business, whatever it is, however they want to see that. I think listening to all these fabulous women 
speak will, you know, hopefully light some, some, you know, someone mm -hmm. up and they'll be able to think of like, you know what, I can do this. I can take that step. And I have the ability, um, and something I do is going to be lasting and make an impact on someone else. That's actually, that's my word for 2023's impact, like little mm. or big, like how many people can I impact? How can my company make an impact and how can I make an impact? Well, you are such a beautiful example though, of, of what this is all about. Like you said, mm -hmm. we are going to put people in breakout rooms. We're going to have a lot of shares from them. They're going to have really, we're going to give them a plan. So it's not going to be like, they're just going to come in here. People are going to get to be with each other. But what I love so much about you and what you stand for is that, you know, you did have that like cushy job. You could, and you could have reentered the workplace back again as an attorney, right? You already did, but you had the courage to say, you know, I'm going to create something that for, for me, where I feel like I can be me and I can really stay true to, you know, something else that's pulling me and be there with my kids and make all of those, you know, redesign your life, I would say. So I really respect you a lot, a lot. And yeah. I can't wait to meet you. And thank you so much for just who you are and the amazing mama you are. And I know that you're going to give those kids, thank them, please, for sharing you with us as well. So thanks so thank much. Thank you. We'll I appreciate you it. Yeah. Yes. How awesome was today? Make sure you subscribe to the podcast and invite your friends to join as well. I'm here for you with fabulous content, great guests, and lots of giveaways. To learn more of how I have taken what I've learned, applied it to my life, helped others find their true voice, text TRUE to 26786, which will give you my top tune-ups and a complimentary 15-minute discovery call with one of our coaches. And remember, keep in touch with me on Instagram at I am Lauren Lahav, Facebook, Lauren Lahav Official, Clubhouse, Lauren Lahav. Make sure you text TRUE, T-R-U-E, to 26786. Text TRUE, T-R-U-E, to 26786. And remember to always stay true to the amazing person you are.